This is the brand new Shoei GTR 3, the successor to the GTR 2. Let's get straight into it. Right, so let's talk about the features and what they have done to improve this new helmet, the GT Air 3. Starting off with the outside and then we'll work our way onto the inside. And then lastly, I will be talking to you guys about the Senna SRL 3. Okay, so at the front here, the most obvious thing is that the visor has now changed um, as compared to the predecessor in that it has a central tab. And if you want to just crack it open, you can just crack it open and get some wind into your face or you can have it at different indented positioning points of your choosing. This is the Realm graphic coming in at around 649.99 RRP. And if you want to save a little bit of cash, then you can get the plain colors at 529.99 RRP. Of course, this is now ECE 2206, so that's fantastic, so it's more safe for us, the riders. Let's move on to the ventilation of the helmet. So at the front, you still have an open or closed chin vent there, and at the top, you have three different positioning points, either fully closed, half open, or fully open. Nothing, something else that is new with the new lid is the fact that the exhaust vents are now higher up on the crown of the helmet, meaning that it has a better airflow going through the helmet itself and if you haven't noticed there's a more prominent plate on the side here uh, to deflect the wind over the sun visor mechanism but also just give it more of an aerodynamic feel of course and at the back here you have a more prominent molded rear spoiler which is quite nice again what they've improved on is of course the safety the aerodynamics and the technology which we'll get onto that a bit later on this visor itself is the cns one c so it's a slight improvement to the previous version it's more of a molded shape around the shell again just trying to make it less wind resistant um, to try to make it more optimal and cut through the wind a little bit better is what i meant right so this is the outside of the shell fantastic so far um, let's move on to the inside so moving on to the inside before I forget to mention, this does come in three different shell sizes for ranging from XS to 2XL. And on the inside, you can get six different uh padding, different forms of padding for the interior so you can fit your head a little bit better. Something new that they've done with the cheek pads is that they have actually bulked up the lower portion so it doesn't rub as much around your neck and also gives you a better seal around your neck um, as well. So less wind coming up from underneath you. The micro ratchet class has been re reworked. It's a bit thinner, again, less cumbersome around the neck. It's um, been built up with high elasticity, high strength fibers in order to make it still strong uh, as compared to one that's of a standard width. Um, on the inside as well they have these little flaps to again just make it a little bit nicer around your neck and reduce the discomfort that you'll get um, wearing the helmet. In the inside you get the little inserts for the Senna SRL3, of course you take them out when you put them on. So let's move on to the Senna SRL3. I want to address the comments on the previous video that we did, which was the Neotech 3 and the Senna SRE, uh, SRL3 installation video, wherein you express your frustrations with the fact that the Senna SRL2 will not fit on the newer lids in the new Senna SRL3 slots. Now, Sherry have released a statement saying that they will be releasing a adapter in the future, but we don't know when. But my only thought is the reason why that they've reimagined the Senna comms unit is purely because they need to adhere to the new safety requirements, which is of course ECE 2206, meaning they would probably have to update the safety, the aerodynamics, as well as the comms units now have to be installed on the helmet while testing. So maybe the old shape didn't fit that look. Honestly, my experience with the Senna SRL3 was fantastic. I just came back off a 4,000 mile tour wearing the Neotech 3. We'll be doing a full review on that later on. And I found no worries with that. Obviously, I have no previous experience with the Senna SRL2 because I never owned that before. But from my opinions, the Senna SRL3 was absolutely fantastic. So let's get straight back into the video. Right, so the Senna SRL3, I can't sing its praises any louder. I loved it on my tour when I went around Europe. Uh, 4, thousand miles work faultlessly 10 hours of constant usage with music and um, intercoms uh, being connected for, via Bluetooth not mesh as it was a different sort of comms unit on the other end it was fantastic heard everything clearly it worked when I needed it to work it connected up even after just turning it off and on again one thing that I do have to say is that you can't charge it while on the go which is another question that people are asking I tried it didn't really work out very well but what's nice about it is the fact that you can charge it while it's still on the table so you don't have to have it in a weird awkward position 
This is their new version, so it's the Mesh 2.0, I believe. So it's a fantastic little unit. I really, really loved it in the whole time that I was riding. Uh, another thing to say about the Senna SRL3 is that it's been tested with it on the helmet already. So it's not just the plates that get tested, it's actually the intercoms as well. So you know this helmet is safe in the case that you do come off um, and it does reach new safety requirements as well. Uh, another thing about the um, Senna SRL3 is that it's been relocated at a different position, so it's a bit lower down. I know a lot of people complained about the fact that because of the cutouts on the Senna SRL2, they experience a bit more wind noise. But again, wind noise is just one of those things that um, you can cater for uh, by just putting on some earplugs and it's just getting on with it. But I understand that some people don't want to put them in all the time. So when it comes to the quietness of the lid, I can't really vouch for how quiet this lid is, but I would guess it's way quieter than the Neotech 3 that I wore, and that was pretty quiet. Now, who's it for? Well, if you have the money, then of course go for the newest lid because it reaches the new safety requirements. But then again, Cherry is a massive manufacturer, so you can trust that the quality of the GTR2 is just as good as well. So if you want to save a little bit of money, then go for the GTR2. It does all the same features, mostly apart from some little reworks of course on the new gtf3 but if you want the most up-to-date one reaching the newest standards um, the coolest graphics as well then you, of course go for the gtf3 it'll have the latest technology as well if you go for the integrated comms unit now if i was on tour i would much rather have a, a full face uh, as compared to a flip top but that's just my own opinion uh, purely because i'd like to have less wind noise and um, i don't consider since I have comms, I don't need to flip it up to talk to the old man or what have you. So it's perfect for anyone that wants to go touring. It's also good for the ones that want to go on a daily commute and don't want to have to faff around by carrying a separate visor in their bag, taking up more space because of course you have the drop down sun visor that comes down about five millimeters longer than the previous version. Now, this lid is all round perfect. If you have the money, I would definitely go for the GT Air 3. If you like the video, please consider subscribing, give us a like, ride safe and see you all soon.